words are very important. Verse 35. Verse 34 said, For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. How did the things come forth? The good treasure in his heart, he spoke them. They came forth. An evil man out of the evil treasure, everything's been putting in there. Now, do you remember in the book of Hebrews that it says an uh, evil heart is a heart of unbelief? It wasn't talking about the heart of some killer or somebody. It's talking about, it's talking about a child of God that is um, tolerating unbelief and fear. Now, that produces then words that come forth and bring forth evil things. I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by your word shall you be justified, and by your word shall you be condemned. And when you stand up in front of God Almighty on the day of judgment, they're going to have a big deal there with everything you ever said. And how you going to get judged? By the words that came out of your mouth. Now, uh, thank God for the blood. Oh, thank God for the blood. Oh, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Yes, amen. Oh, what a thrill. Oh, glory be to God to walk in continual repentance of that, keeping yourself in a state of repentance before the Lord with a watch over my mouth. Praise God. Amen. So, and something like that does come out in my mouth. You stop right where you are. Oh, Lord, I repent in the name of Jesus. Just wipe that word completely until you've meditated the word and spoken the word and spoken the word and spoken the word until it builds up and it builds up and it builds up. And when the word said perfected love casteth out fear, the word casteth out is literally means to flush out. It comes to there's no more room in there for anything else. Hallelujah. Then that's what comes out of your mouth. Yeah, I've met people that would, that would say, well, you know, I just, I don't know, just somehow I don't feel like I'll live past 50. Now, the devil put that on me when I was a young man. I didn't talk about it, but I just, it just seemed like to me that, that there was something about 50 years old and I wasn't going to get past that. And no, oh, that's one of the first things that the, that the Lord delivered me from and jerked that out of me. And he said, don't you ever say that. Well, thank God I had not said that beforehand. And because uh, if that thought would come, I'd just kick it away. And then, of course, after I got born again, I, 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 didn't, I didn't tolerate that at all. And after I learned this, I mean, I attacked that spirit that was trying to get me to talk myself to death. Now, you put those spiritual laws in motion, and you just continue to say that. Well, uh, I'll probably never live past 50. I, I'll probably, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'll make it to 50, I know, but n not any longer than that. And, you know, I just seem like I'm just not going to live past 50 years old and get a bunch of guys together and they get to talking, particularly they get drinking a little bit. And one of them will say, what are you, you going to do when you get old, man? He said, well, I, I probably won't get very old. I ain't going to live old about 50. That's in there and it just keeps coming out. It'll come to fruition and come to pass I have seen it. Keith has seen it. We, the, the, if you've been in the ministry very long, you've seen it. A lot of people have seen it and didn't know what it was. Suddenly some guy just gets sick and you can't anybody, all the praying don't seem like it does anything. You can't turn it around. Why? 
that person has put certain spiritual laws into motion that they're the only ones that can turn them around. It was their tongue that started it, and it'll have to be their tongue that finishes it. And you get them in a coma or something, and, and, or too much of the time this happens in the hospitals. They, the least little old thing just drug you up to where you ain't got control of your own mouth. You better really be careful about that. Mm -mm. They'll doctor you to death. certain things that are said over children. And it gets in that child's thinking and gets in their mouth. And, and, and they say it, even if it's just privately to themselves. And they say it and say it and say it. And then it comes to pass out there and can't anybody figure out why. This powerful, powerful, serious business. First words. What is going to blurt out your mouth the, when the Lord was first teaching me about this, I, I became aware of it, and uh, I, I was really, really endeavoring to, to meditate on certain scriptures, particularly some of them that I read you tonight, about put a watch over my mouth, and I put those words in my mouth that you said, Lord, uh, you won't alter the things that come out your lips, and I, I place that in my mouth, praise the Lord, that I won't alter your word in my lips. Amen. Meditate on it. Think about it. Spend time with it. Listen to it. Listen to it. Listen to it. Immerse myself in it. What, just listen to tapes night and day until these things become part of my being. Amen. We came home, we'd been traveling a long time, and we just, we'd the, just got the kids to bed, and, and I told Gloria, I said, Gloria, I'm still so wound up, I can't, uh, I, I didn't say okay, I said, I, I'm still so wound up, I, I don't wanna go to bed right now, you go ahead, I'm, I'm gonna sit up a while. Whew. I'm done for a few days. But I'm still, you know, when it comes about seven o'clock in the evening, I'm ready to preach <laughs> because that, that's, where, that's where my life is. And uh, I said, I'm, I'm just going to sit around here for a little while and stay up a little while. She said, okay. So I'm sitting up in there and I watched the television for a little while and then a bunch of trash and so <laughs> and, and I just praised around, read a little while finally began to get a little bit sleepy, and I said, well, I'm going on to bed. <clears throat> Gloria had bought a big ottoman. I thought they were footstools, <laughs> but no, they're ottomans. <laughs> anyway, we got us one. Great big thing, man. I don't know what that thing weighed, but it... I mean, it, it didn't make you huff a little bit, pick it up. You know, it's a great big thing, big square thing, big green square thing. <laughs> and uh, I got up to go. One, one, one of the problems that most of you have never had to deal with is staying in a different room every few nights. They keep moving the bathroom. Oh, one night, this just stands out in my memory really, really strong. One night, we had moved from the one place where we were having a meeting into another, and we're now in a different hotel. And I got up in the middle of the night, and I headed to the, to the bathroom. And I got up, and I walked around, and, I, and wham, I hit the wall. I, and I, you know, I, I wasn't fully awake. And it just woke me up. Now, right then, we're going to find out what's in you in a bundle. <laughs> And I, I hit the wall, and now I'm feeling this wall. <laughs> uh, that, that's where it was last night. And I, I don't know. I got out lost as a goose in a hailstorm. Man, I, I don't know where to go. And then I saw a little sliver of light under the door going out into the hall, and it reoriented my thinking. And, uh, and that's scriptural. You can find that in the writings of Peter. Look it up sometime. Just remember, Kenneth hitting the wall trying to find the bathroom and go read First and Second Peter, and you'll find it. 
And uh, that night, I started to bed, <laughs> turned the light out, and took about three more steps, and I just drop kicked that big old stool. I mean, and my one of my little toes went pop, and I oh. Now, instead of hollering what I would have one at one time hollered, <laughs> before I thought about it, I didn't think about it. Just that shocking shooting pain <laughs> shot up through me because I broke that little toe. And I shouted, Jesus, I'm healed in the name that's above every name. Now, that is on the inside of me. And man, I went on and went to bed, and the devil said, well, you ain't going to get any sleep tonight. I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to sleep by faith. He gives his beloved sleep. And I made them confess the scripture a little while. Finally went on, went on to sleep. I got up the next morning. Before I even put my feet out on the floor, Floor. I heard this just as clear. Why don't you check and see? Look at your toe. See if it's broken. Now you better watch out for that. You let the, pro the problem get in your eyes, it'll get in your mouth. And you'll start saying, Oh, I thought I got, I thought I got my healing. I guess my Now you've reversed it. I mean, it is that critical and that important because what I shouted the night before was first word. Now I have to maintain it after about 10 hours. Now I'm going to have to maintain this thing. I said, no, why should I look? I don't have to look. So, and I got out of bed and, oh, and the devil said, see there, you ain't healed. <clears throat> I said, you know, Satan, I'll make a choice to not believe you. You're a liar. So you telling me I'm not healed, that's a good indication that I am. <laughs> and I, it, it was really hurting. And so I went over to the I started getting dressed, and when it comes time to put my socks and shoes on, I, I got my socks out, and I put them on with my eyes shut. And the devil said, you better look at that toe. It's black and blue. It's black and blue. Oh, your toe has done turned black. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. I, and I said out loud without opening my eyes, what is so strange about a black toe? I have very close friends, Satan, that all their toes are black. <laughs> now, I don't have any idea why I said that, but that came up out of me. And it shocked him the way it did you. He just didn't have no more to say. What, what defense has he got for that? <laughs> you know? And then I got tickled when I heard it come out of my mouth. And, you know, Mary Hart does good like a medicine. And so I laughed about that a little while, shut my eyes, put my socks and shoes on. And I went in the kitchen. Gloria was already in there. I went in there. I said, Gloria, on the way to bed last night, I kicked that big green stool. But I want to tell you, I received my healing. It is mine. She said, I agree with you 100%. And we just shouted and praised God and just had us a big time. Well, I had an appointment with a man at a little airport that was about, oh, 10, 15 minutes from our house. And uh, the Lord had... Um, given me permission and provided the funds to buy the first airplane that this ministry ever had. And it was a little single engine 
Cessna Skylane. And so I had an appointment to go talk to the man. I used to work for the man. And so I knew him well. And I knew that little airplane because they had it back when I used to work there. And, and it was a really, really nice little Skylane. And, and that's the one the Lord pointed out to me. And so I had an appointment with him that morning. So I drove out there. And I got out of the car, and when I put my foot down on the ground, oh, man. So I'm going in to see Mr. Spinks. And I went in there, and uh, I walked in the office, and the receptionist was there, and she didn't know me. I didn't know her. And so I walked up to her in front of her desk there, and uh, she said, you hurt yourself? I said, about 2 o'clock this morning, I kicked a great big footstool and broke my toe. Oh, she said, oh. But before I let her get started, I said, when I said I broke my toe, but Jesus said when he was on the earth that whatsoever thing you desire, when you pray, believe you receive it and you shall have it and I believe I receive my healing. And I just want you to know that my foot is healed in the name of Jesus. By the time I got the word Jesus out, she was gone. <laughs> so that got rid of that unbelief, didn't it? <laughs> and gave me another opportunity to testify. So Mr. Spinks heard me out there and said, come on in. I went in there and had my conversation with him. And, and I, wanted to go, I wanted to go out there and, and see that little airplane. Actually, what I wanted to do is go out there and put my hands on it. And uh, he told me right where it was. So I went out, and when I got in the car, it felt just like it did when I got up that morning. I sat down in the car. I drove what amounted to probably, oh, three or four blocks. Had to drive down to the end of the ramp and drive in and then across on the other side where those airplanes were parked. And I drove over there to it. And I'm just, I got so tickled to testify to that, that girl in the office there. I, that, really, that really helped me. I, I really enjoyed that. And I said, Lord, your word never returns void. I said, that's going to be in her until she either goes and looks it up in the scripture or until she gets saved on it. I'm just holding her to it. I'm holding the word of God in her in the name of Jesus. And I got, I got tickled over that. So I pulled up there next to the airplane and swung the door open and, and got out of the car. And when I stepped down on that foot, it just as healed and well and pain-free as it is right now. Amen. Hallelujah. What happened? First words. The very moment that came out my mouth and activated the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus activated the law of the spirit of healing, activated the law and the power of God on the blessing, not the curse. Your words have power. Music play. The words you speak control more than just the stuff in your life. Choose life. Stay on the God side of everything. When you know what to say and how to say it, you can speak life into any situation and change any circumstance with words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Choose Life, Choose Words is a three DVD or six CD teaching from Brother Copeland that shows you how to create the good life you've always wanted. God wants to give you the advantage so you can flourish in every area of life. Choose Life, Choose Words shows you how to thrive God's way. Learn directly from road-tested realities and practical insights from over 45 years of Brother Copeland's study, experience, and personal relationship with God. Get Choose Life, Choose Words today and change your life forever. Order Choose Life, Choose Words, the brand new teaching series by Kenneth Copeland on DVD or on CD for $20. 
go to our website, kcm.org, or call us at 1-800-600-7395. For an additional 10% off, order your copies online. Take control over your life. Understand the power of your words and live in the victory God has promised you with Choose Life, Choose Words. Order today. On this broadcast today, you heard why it is so important that we activate the power and the blessing of God in our life with our words. And that's why I'm offering this to you today. Choose Life, Choose Words. This is a CD or DVD series by Brother Copeland. This will help you get the truths that he's been teaching us today on these broadcasts and for so long now. Get these things down on the inside. Provide a great way for you to get them into the hands. Get this truth and this revelation into the hands of your family and your friends. You get it into your life. You eat it up and you pass it on. And uh, along with this, I want to make this gift available to you today. This is called uh, How You Call It Is How It Will Be. A small book absolutely free to you a great resource we want to send this to you absolutely free so just let us know that you want it let us get it into your life now some of you watching this broadcast and if not all of you have experienced things in your life things like uh, uh, unseen events in life and if you're not watchful the enemy of your life will try to get that between you and God try to make you angry at him hurt or offended towards God. And if you're going through something like this, let me encourage you, don't run away from your father, run to him. Those open arms of love are ready to just wrap around you and you will experience healing love, the grace of God, his strength, his kindness, faithfulness to you to help when you need it the most. So remember that Jesus, your redeemer, can bring light and hope into any situation no matter what things seem like. And that is exactly what happened for the family whose story you are about to see. Pastor Glenwood Williams kept believing in the goodness of God. Even when he was faced with terrible tragedy, he and his family trusted God and they experienced the power of God in their lives. Don't miss this story coming up next. This is Jeremy Pearson's reminding you, God loves you and we love you. And Jesus is Lord. Glenwood Williams is a longtime partner with KCM and the senior pastor of Edified Christian Church in Lago, Maryland. Glenwood founded the church with his wife, Regina, and their two young daughters. This couple had been married for 27 years in 2007 when a snowstorm blanketed their community. Regina was not only the pastor's wife and a mother, she was also the principal of the local school, and it was her responsibility to check on the building. As she traveled from her home, this vibrant woman of God was involved in a car accident that proved to be fatal. Regina was very well known uh, in the county and family and friends, and it, the word really just got out because she was very, very popular and very well loved by the community. Oftentimes people in these situations say God did that, but I knew it was a hit from hell. It was really my own personal 911. And because of my teaching uh, on Mark chapter 4, Satan comes to take away the word. That's one thing he will not take here is the word of God. I look to my father as a strong rock. I tell him often that um, because of him, I'm able to continue on in my life and be very consistent in the things that the Lord has called me to do. I always said to him, even after my mom passed, the most important thing to me is that you have a life filled with joy. And so whatever it takes for you to live long and live strong and have joy, do it. And that has strengthened our relationship because I support him with every decision that he makes. And so even with when he decided to get married, for example, I was like, yes, please, <laughs> please do it. Now it was a, of course an adjustment, but I'm like, I want you to live long. And he has so, you know, support with him for all of those years. He was always Reverend Williams. And so, you know, he was just in my mind in that way, like a spiritual father. And um, one day he made his intentions known to me. And uh, I just thought that he was bonkers, really. And so I said, well, you know, I, I, I will cover you in prayer. You know, I, I just, and that's all I can do at this point, you know, poor man, you know, that kind of thing. 
And then, um, and, and I left it at that. But then the Lord really began to deal with my heart. It slowly began to change. And I started seeing more of the man as opposed to, you know, the minister. I have remarried to a lovely young lady who is just the center of my life, spirit-filled, prayer warrior, uh, one who really has been by my side. She loves the Word, has had teachings from uh, Kenneth and Gloria uh, as well, and uh, we have like minds concerning the Word of God. And also, I have two boys. <laughs> I have a nine-month-old and a two-year-old, <laughs> you know. Uh, never in my mind would have thought that that would occur, but uh, it's, it's really a new day. In Psalms 91, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. You know, that is one of my favorite scriptures. And uh, that teaching is very powerful and encouraging because I plan to live long. I plan to be here to cover my family. We were strengthened by even the word we've preached and been taught by the ministry of Kenneth Copeland and Gloria Copeland. You know, we have the victory. We triumph in every situation. Remember to request your free book, How You Call It Is How It Will Be by Kenneth Copeland. For faster processing, go to kcm.org and request your free copy. You can receive it as a mini book or download it from our website. For the mini book version, one per household, please offer good for 30 days. According to the Bible, a prophet strengthens others. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm commissioning you to launch an all-out war on fear. Encourages them. There are going to be political walls and political fences that crumble right before men's eyes. The Berlin Wall will come down. Since 1977, Kenneth Copeland has operated in the office of the prophet and encouraged believers all over the world. You need to see yourself successful. You need to see yourself right up on top, praise God. That's the way God sees you. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. Word Explosion, October 11th through 13th with Kenneth Copeland, Bill Winston, and Chaplain A.L. Downing in Columbia, South Carolina. The Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 8th through 10th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. The 2013 Branson Victory Campaign, March 7th through 9th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. The 2013 Southwest Believers Convention, July 1st through 6th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas. The 2013 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 14th through 16th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. For more information, go to kcm.org events.